Hello everyone, and welcome to this short video about AWS Security Incident Response. In today's video, we'll be covering some exciting new feature releases, integrations, and how to truly operationalize the service. But before we jump in, I want to quickly discuss what AWS Security Incident Response is and the value it can provide your organization. So AWS Security Incident Response is an overlay or an extension of your current SOC team and incident response capabilities. It's an auto triaging system for all of your guard duty and some security hub findings. It uses our proprietary threat intelligence and advanced tooling under the hood. It's direct 24 by seven access to AWS's professionally trained puzzle solvers, our customer incident response team or CERT who resolve active and perceived threats to AWS customers. It's a persistent immutable portal providing your organization a single place to operate and evolve all security incident response activities. It provides one portal to create reactive cases and receive proactive cases from our CERT team within a 15 minute service level objective. So if there's a case you wanna resolve internally, great. If you need help with an investigation of logs or suspicious activity, great. Now at any time with security incident response, you'll be able to create or escalate that case to our CERT. Security Incident Response provides you an unlimited amount of cases and escalations to our CERT team with no retainers. It's only a monthly subscription. It's also a tool to help you level up your detection, response, containment, and recovery capabilities. Okay, so for today's video, I'll be showcasing a new feature release and some important details on how to integrate or operationalize the service with your current incident management plan, tooling, and processes. Now in August of 2025, AWS expanded security incident response with organizational unit or OU level memberships. This strategic enhancement allows organizations to implement tailored security management at the OU level rather than across the entire organization, providing greater flexibility and control over security resources. Responding to customer feedback, AWS launched full Amazon EventBridge integration in April of 2025. This powerful capability enables seamless operationalization of security incident response within your existing security ecosystem. The integration allows customers to index or create an event on virtually any activity within the AWS security incident response from initial alerts to resolution steps connecting your preferred security tools, partner solutions, and incident response workflows into a cohesive system. Now, understanding the critical role of operational efficiency, AWS has developed ready-to-deploy integration solutions with leading platforms like Jira and ServiceNow. These purpose-built connectors streamline security workflows within the tools your teams may already use on a daily basis. Additional integration solutions are currently in development to further extend this ecosystem. Okay, so now that we've discussed what's in today's video, let's go ahead and jump into the AWS Security Incident Response Service Console and start walking through this demo. I wanted to take a minute to help you get comfortable with the Service Console layout so that you know where everything is at. Once the service is enabled and configured, you'll access the service within the delegated administrator account that you set up during our Getting Started video. So if you start by clicking View Dashboard, you'll see some additional membership configurations along the top and the number of open versus closed cases at the bottom. Now over on the left hand side of the screen, if we start on Incident Response Team, you'll see the internal incident response team that we've built out here at AWS for our demo account. This is a good opportunity to really understand who your organization's incident responders are. You can simply add, edit, or delete future and current members. Now by selecting proactive response menu item, this is where you can toggle the proactive response or our auto triaging feature of the service. This is not a dependency, and if your organization is hesitant about this level of access from our customer incident response team, it can be turned on or off at any time. 
This feature simply creates a service linked role, which is also mentioned in our Getting Started video, in every member account. Now under the Accounts menu, this is where you'll encounter the item of today's showcase. This is where you can associate part or all of your organization's OUs for membership. This step can be completed during the setup phase of the service or after the fact. In today's video, you'll see how to edit this association after the fact. Now the settings page contains administrative metadata about your subscription and you can add tags according to your tagging strategy. Now that we've taken a quick tour of the service layout, let's look at case creation. Now this is addressing the reactive value of the service, where you can cut a case directly to our customer incident response team or CERT 24 by 7, 365 with no limit. Now under the cases menu, in the upper right hand corner of the screen, you'll see create case. This is where you can submit either an AWS supported case which is directly escalated to our CERT or a self-managed case, which can be escalated at any time later. So no matter what kind of case you're submitting, it's important to fill out the case with as much detail and metadata as possible, providing our CERT team enough of the details they need to get started on their investigation for and with you. Now, once the case is submitted, and I'll go ahead and jump into a case that's already been submitted, a self-managed version, at the top right corner of every case is the Get Help from AWS button. Now this is intended for self-managed cases which require escalation to our CERT team. So I'm not going to click the Get Help button because this would escalate this case to our CERT team, drawing them off a potentially live escalation with a customer. Now within the cases themselves, you have the flexibility to input whatever data is necessary for your organization to conduct the investigation. Now this is either along with our CERT or internally as a self-managed case. Now this includes things like communications, permissions, attachments, and tags. Now under the permissions tab, you can add watchers. This notifies parties external to the incident response team of any case update and only to that case. So principle of least privilege is followed here. Now scrolling down, you can see the template case permission policy. This IAM policy will enable any principal access to contribute to that particular case. So for example, if the investigation involves say S3 storage, Maybe your organization has an S3 subject matter expert that requires assistance with this investigation. Now I wanna look at the operational power and flexibility of security incident response with EventBridge. As a quick reminder, Amazon EventBridge is a serverless event bus that simplifies building event-driven applications or architectures in the AWS cloud. It allows you to connect different AWS services, SaaS applications or your own applications by routing events between them. Now to start building a rule in EventBridge is very simple. I'm on the Amazon EventBridge homepage here. On the left hand side, you click rules, then create rule. You're going to give the rule a name and an optional description and then select next. Now leaving the event pattern as use pattern form, hit the drop down arrow and type in AWS security incident response, then select that service. Under the event type drop down, you can see all the options or event patterns that you can index on. So if I'm going to index and create a pattern based on cases being created, that's how I would do that. And you always have the option to manually edit the event pattern JSON, but think of all the possibilities here. If you have various teams that need to get case comments added versus case creation, or if you have a third party managed detection and response vendor that needs to be aware of a case being created, 
Or how about a chat application, channel notification to trigger communications external to the AWS console? There's potential containment automations or downstream workflows. However your organization currently triggers, evolves, and indexes on security investigations, Event Bridge and Security Incident Response can help you achieve it. Now I've prepared an Event Bridge rule to showcase, so let me go ahead and bring that up now. The event pattern I'm indexing on is case update, and that's all I'm indexing on. And the targets for this are an SNS topic and a Lambda function. So the SNS topic crafts a carefully constructed email with instructions based on case updates, and the Lambda function parses the JSON event fields and populates a JIRA board that I've constructed. So far, we've highlighted the organizational unit level membership and the operational flexibility that EventBridge brings. I'd like to shift the conversation over to some ITSM solutions we've developed at AWS, notably for JIRA and ServiceNow. As we've provided the link to this URL in the notes, our developers have crafted a simple to follow set of instructions to deploy a fully tested and fledged solution for deploying JIRA or ServiceNow integrations. This solution provides sample integrations for AWS security incident response, and it enables our customers to seamlessly integrate the service with their existing applications for incident response, stakeholder notifications, and case management. I might add that this solution is bi-directional, meaning any update to the Security Incident Response Console will reflect in your JIRA or ServiceNow ITSM and vice versa. Let me zoom in on the architecture for a bit. Now using a combination of simple notification service, simple queuing service, Lambda functions, and event bridge rules, this solution helps you respond when it matters most and can help keep your current foundational response mechanisms in place. Lastly, I want to showcase the JIRA integration for this demo, and I want to do so by adding a comment and an attachment to a case in our Security Incident Response Console, then watching the update occur over in JIRA. So here on the screen, we're looking at a JIRA board with several tasks on it. Now these tasks, they were added automatically as soon as I deployed this, the solution from GitHub. And I'll go ahead and pick one I've been using to showcase the integration, and it's titled JIRA Test Case Showcase Integration Ongoing. Now you can see in this JIRA task that the description is completely filled out with all of the metadata and the details, and these all came from the Security Incident Response Console, and that includes all of the comments with timestamps. So from here, we'll go ahead and hop back over to the Security Incident Response Command Center. We'll find the case that aligns with that JIRA task, and we'll go into Communications, and I'll simply add a test comment. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add an attachment. So you go over to the Attachments tab, you click Upload. You're gonna choose your file. And then you click the Upload button. Now once that occurs, you're gonna see a pending right here. It's important to just click the Refresh button. And depending on the size of the attachment, it might take a second or two for that to be completed. But now that that's all wrapped up, we'll jump back over here to the JIRA project and click on the same task. And if we scroll down here, you can see that my test comment that was applied 37 seconds ago has already transferred from security incident response through the architecture over to the JIRA task itself. And now you can see that the log files.txt attachment that I put into the security incident response attachments page has transferred over to the JIRA task as well. So on a typical day, these updates require no more than five to 30 seconds. However, I have seen them take between three and four minutes. And so just be cognizant of that as you're testing out this integration yourself. And that concludes today's discussion and demo. With some focused planning, your AWS Security Incident Response Service is operationalized. 
I hope you enjoyed the updates and the demo today as we focused on the OU level membership, integrations with EventBridge, and showcased our JIRA and ServiceNow solutions. Remember, security is a journey, not a destination. If you start with these basics, and as you grow more comfortable, explore more advanced features and automated responses. Thank you for following along. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more AWS security tips. Stay safe out there.